Hi everyone, you may have heard of gimbals and even seen them used by filmmakers and content creators and wondered what they are and how they work. Now in this video, I'm gonna teach you all you need to know about what is a gimbal and why you might need one. Hi, my name is Tim from 40 Tech and in this first video, we're going to learn exactly what a gimbal is, the types of gimbals and how they can help make our footage look more cinematic and professional. Now this is a first introductory video in this series intended for beginners and those new to gimbals or who have not used them before. Now I suggest starting with this video and then following the playlist on the gimbal school which will teach you all you need to know about how to become a master at using a gimbal from an absolute beginner through to becoming an expert gimbal user. So buckle up and come for the ride. This is gimbal school, what is a gimbal? Now a gimbal can come in all short sorts of different shapes and sizes ranging from the very small all the way up to a full size professional gimbal. But whatever their design, shape and size, they share a common purpose to act as a camera stabilizer to make silky smooth footage and to minimize the micro shakes that can happen when we're hand holding camera and moving. Now they achieve this by using three brushless silent motors for each of the three axes. Now a tilt motor that minimizes movement up and down on the Y axis, a pan motor to minimize the movement left and right on the X axis, and a rotation motor to minimize movement in the rotation axis or the Z axis. Now these three motors work in unison to eliminate jerky movements to produce silky smooth footage by keeping our camera steady and the movements nice and slow and smooth. All right, so let's uh, look closely at the gimbals. Now we can group these gimbals into three groups. The smallest gimbals like this, which is the Fury Tech Pocket 3, the Osmo Pocket 2 and the Osmo Pocket 3, all have built-in cameras. Now they are pretty much, you could say, like an all-in-one package. They don't need anything else to produce silky smooth footage. Just turn them on and it gets filming. So pretty much they've got a built-in camera and gimbal all working together to keep things perfectly balanced and, and designed you know, to all act as one package. So these are for users who just want to produce smooth footage quickly and easily in a small and convenient package. Let's now move on to look at the next group of gimbals which are specifically designed for the camera that you may already own. So this one, for example, the Inky Falcon, is specifically designed to work for GoPro Hero Camera and it's got the ability to, record, uh, to control the GoPro from the gimbal itself, for example, like switch on and off and change modes and start and stop recording. Now this a DJI Mobile 6 gimbal is designed to specifically work with the mobile phone that you already own. You just turn on the gimbal, clip in the mobile phone and the gimbal is pretty much ready to go. However, this group of gimbals does require a little bit of effort before starting to film. Now the Inky Falcon needs to uh, sort of kind of screw in the camera and you go through a process known as balancing which requires altering the angle of the camera and the moving and adjusting the arms till the camera is balanced. Now this must be done before the gimbal can be used. It can take just a few minutes to get going. The DJI Mobile 6 and the Insta360 Flow are much faster to get filming as they would just require clipping on the mobile using the dedicated uh, magnet and the clip switching on the camera app or the dedicated DJI Mimo app and it then involves a little little check to make sure the mobile phone clip is in the right place. Now the advantage of these particular gimbals is that you can use your existing mobile but the disadvantage is that the mobile can't then be used for other things like navigation or taking calls so this group does require a little bit of setup before the gimbal is ready to be used and unlike the first group which is already to be can use just after switching on. Now the third group is the professional large gimbals and these take much much longer to set up before they can be used. Now these are designed to take a much heavier camera like a DSLR or a compact and it can also work like multi devices so for example you, they can also uh, balance an action camera like the GoPro or a mobile with a special adapter. Now these gimbals offer the smoothest footage as they have the strongest motors but they're also the most expensive and also the heaviest. Now before use, the camera does need to be balanced correctly, which can take a few minutes and can be rather frustrating for new users and, and they then require calibration. So therefore this group of gimbals is much more suited for those uh, in the professional film industry or you know, much more experienced users. Content creators who want the best results and don't mind the laborious setup beforehand. Now in addition to the main purpose to keep the camera steady and have smooth footage, 
gimbals have a few more tricks up their sleeve. Now these tricks depend on the mode. Now these tricks depend on the model of the gimbal. Most have accompanying app which allow controlling of the gimbal from a distance. So for example, you could set the gimbal up on a tripod and then control the movement some distance away. Now some offer a subject tracking feature, for example the Osmo Pocket 2, the Pocket 3 and if you attack Pocket 3, as well as the other mobile gimbals. All can track a person moving in front of the camera and then will automatically move the gimbal, the gimbal keeping the person in the frame. They most also have object tracking as well as face tracking. Other features offered include uh, setting a movement of waypoints. So for example, the gimbal will move in one direction and it's then going to uh, point to another direction. Now this is ex excellent for things like motion lapses and time lapses, which are pretty much impossible to do handheld. Now for these reasons, many people prefer using a gimbal rather than relying on electronic stabilization that's built into mobile phones and cameras. Now, electronic stabilization needs good lighting to work properly, so in low light, it, you know, it really doesn't work very well. Whereas a mechanical gimbal, on the other hand, doesn't really care what the light levels are and is going to continue to work regardless. So that is a very quick introduction to what a gimbal is, why they're popular among content creators and those serious of making, making smooth video footage. We've also gone over some advantages and some of the features that these gimbals offer. Now which gimbal is right for you depends pretty much on a budget, any existing cameras that you own, and also its compactness. Anyway, hope this information is useful. To continue learning about gimbals, then I suggest the next two videos, when they become available, where I go into more details of why you use gimbals, their advantages over electronic stabilization, or if you already have a gimbal, then here's a video teaching the correct way to hold a gimbal and how to get the smoother footage. Other than that, take care and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.